Don't you ever try to pick the food like this. With the... <laughs> I've only done that a few times. Yeah. This here is a third generation donut shop and he has just made us something very special to try. <laughs> There's at least this much olive oil on top of this. There really is nothing else quite like a Medina in Morocco. Welcome to Waypoint of View. We're Jess and Miles and we're two years into our journey around the world. After an incredible adventure in the Sahara Desert, we have just made it to the last stop of our road trip around Morocco. We are continuing our time here in Morocco and today we're in the famous city of Marrakesh. After we had such a great time doing a cooking class in Chef Shawin, we thought what better way to experience Marrakesh than through the food. So we reached out to Moroccan food tours and they're gonna be taking us around the city today. I am so excited to eat our way through Marrakesh. Let's go meet our guide and see what this city has to offer. This is Abdul, he's going to be taking us around Marrakesh today. And what is our first stop this morning? Our first stop is gonna be Moroccan Simmen, which is Moroccan pancakes with an interesting soup that we always have at morning, a light soup. It's gonna get you going throughout the day. <laughs> busy morning. So, this is a soup that uh, we always get in the morning. We call it white harira. Perfect for breakfast, it's really a gentle taste. And we sprinkle a little bit of uh, olive oil on top of it. Mm. It's super creamy, light, it's actually savory, very oily. This is delicious, I can see why. This is a perfect way to start the day. This one is called bisara. This bisara is really famous all around Morocco. Okay. And what is it? Bisara is like a fava bean based soup. Here in Marrakesh, we do eat it with uh, well, eat drink <laughs> with uh, bread. I think I got mostly olive oil in that bite. It's delicious. <laughs> there's there's at least this much olive oil on top of this. And what's best goes with anything Moroccan? Tea? And tea. Oh, we have a table now. We're taking this breakfast to a table. We've had Moroccan pancakes basically every morning since we got here, but none of them have looked like this with so much flavor packed into it. You can taste the onion. There's so much flavor. Morocco is <laughs> Usually the pancakes we've been eating each morning, we put jam on them instead, but this is a savory pancake. Oh my god. Which I'm a big fan of. This is good. Mm. He likes it. <laughs> I'm more of a savory breakfast kind of gal versus a sweet breakfast girl. Good. We're not doing a very good job of pacing ourselves this morning. Stop one was supposed to be a quick stop, grab a pancake, a half a bowl of soup, and here we are. We've got tea. It's gonna be a long day of eating. <laughs> Great first stop, and it's time to start making our way further into the Medina. This is the Moroccan donut, so what we call spinge. Spinge, exactly. Spinge. Spinge, spinge or spinge. Uh, this is a really, really amazing place where we are. So donuts are another popular breakfast food here in Morocco. This here is a third generation donut shop and he has just made us something very special to try. Wow. How is he not burning his hand? It's directly in the oil. You can see the egg on the inside. Yeah, so like half cooked. That is something special right there. That might be the crispiest donut I've ever had. And I have never had a donut stuffed with an egg. Abdul said that this was a light snack that you could have either in the morning or before dinner. I don't think the one stuffed with egg would be considered a light snack. Okay, here's the regular donut. Very good. Plain but really nice flavor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Crispy on the outside, fluffy on the inside. And we're washing it down with nus nus, which is half milk and half coffee. And this is perfect. This is only stop number two. So this Medina might not be as big as the one in Fez, but it definitely has a similar feel. There are all these narrow alleyways. It is full of souks packed with people, easy to get lost, it's busy, chaotic. There really is nothing else quite like a Medina in Morocco.
Abdul has just brought us to a community oven, which is not as common anymore, but traditionally there would be one or two of these in each neighborhood. You would bring your loaf of bread each morning for the baker to bake for you and then pick it up in the afternoon. He bakes about 1,000 loaves of bread for the people in this neighborhood each day. As a kid, your mom, will, well, let's say you have school at 8 a.m. And you, you wake up, uh, you eat breakfast, your mom has already been awake since 6 a.m. She made the loaf and everything, she let it rest, and on, on your way to school, you will take the loaf and bring it here. Oh, so you drop it off at the community You just drop oven. it off, exactly. And wow. once you're done uh, uh, with your uh, school, you come back here at like 12 p.m. let's say, and you come and pick it up and you go eat lunch with it. Such That's a cool, really cool. Uh, Beautiful, so beautiful. So uh, then you pay, like you pay them a fee for cooking the bread? For loaf, bread? yeah, for okay. loaf. That's so why you don't find like like homemade uh, like uh, bread. Mm -hmm. It's not always so small, it's always large because they price you per loaf, so okay. the housewife Might needs well to be, be economical. Yeah. yeah. He told you, marhaba, if you wanted to eat with them. Ah. <laughs> because <laughs> it's not only bread that we bake here, it could be pastries as well, so you make pastries. And something really common, tawat sardine. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like a sardine uh, pallet, where you just put the sardine with sprinkles of uh, salt in it, you're good to go. You put it inside the oven, and it's done. This lubia, lubia, which literally means uh, fava beans or beans. It's super creamy with no cheese in it, and it comes accompanied with uh, garlic and preserved lemon, harissa as well. If you like some of the spicy, we normally eat it with bread, accompanied with the famous Moroccan Always minty. Always Moroccan minty. Yeah. Here's a trick. Don't you ever try to pick the food like this with the <laughs> I've only done that a few times. Yeah. So don't be afraid to use your thumb and get it a bit inside the sauce. You can just lick it up afterwards. Okay. And yeah, that's how you hold it up. It never falls off. As well. A little bit of yeah. use the thumb to support. There you go. We say Bismillah when we start eating. Bismillah. Bismillah means in the name of God. So Bismillah. Bismillah. Mm. This definitely adds a kick. <laughs> Did you put too much? On that bite, yes. <laughs> that is so creamy. Seriously, I think the creamiest beans I've ever had. When we got here, Abdul promised us the best beans that we've ever had in our life. And I'm gonna go and say that's true. My favorite stop so far. Who knew a bowl of beans would taste so good? You can't forget to add some of the extra fat. <laughs> That was delicious, and this is the perfect example of a street we would never find on our own. And basically right next door to the place where we just had those delicious beans is a place that's making sardine kufta. It's just like beef kufta, but it's actually ground up sardines, and we're going to have a sardine burger. This guy is making the sardine patties here, and then they grill them just over here. I'll tell you the order. Okay. How we do it? I'm First. jumping the gun. <laughs> First, add some butter on the bread, right? Then we have our sardine patty. And you did the tomato sauce. Onion. Look at this. It's like a little sardine slider. That is so good. You really would not be able to tell that this was sardines, no. honestly. So much flavor. Nice. Very nice. Nice to meet you. Like nice it? to meet you. Mm -hmm. 10 out of 10. Thumbs up. Wow. I've already eaten about three loaves of bread today, so I'm gonna try the low carb version. He told me just to smear it into the butter. The low carb version. <laughs> just a little bit of salted butter. It's so good. It's so juicy, and you can taste the char from the fire. It's not too fishy, right? No, not at all. If I give it to you, if I tell you nothing, you think that it's normal kefta. Definitely. Really good. You would not know. Really good kefta. Bye. Bye. Shukran. Bye. <laughs>
Soft, a little chewy. It's not bad. It does kind of have the texture of a mushroom. If you drink the broth. So there are 35 spices in this broth here. Wow. Try to drink it again. We put more of that spice. Oh wow, that, yeah, that spice is amazing. Oh, that's a big one. That's good. I could eat a few more of those. I can see why people come here just for this broth. So much flavor. Tangia, Morocco's specialty dish. Well, we need the six ingredients. Okay. So easy to make. First thing is gonna be meat, then you need the king of spices, saffron, mm -hmm. then preserved lemon, then some uh, garlic, some uh, olive oil, and cumin. Okay. The more you put, the tastier it gets, so you can't go wrong with it. Yeah, I'm going to show Steaming up the camera. <laughs> we have had a lot of tagine here in Morocco, typically about one per day, but this will be our first time trying tangia. Tangia, yeah. So you can make all kinds of tangia, but we are going to be trying sheep today. It's so tender, you can just squeeze it right off the bone with the bread. No need for a fork. Mm. Mm. Lamb has a really special flavor in itself. Like you can tell when you're eating a good piece of lamb. But this has so much flavor from the spices and it is just swimming in this delicious juice. Mm. Oh man. Oh wow. That is yeah. really, really good. So the best tangier in the town. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know how I'm not full. I'm, I'm so full. still finding space. <laughs> That's the magic, the magic of the town. It's the magic of Moroccan food. Yeah. You always find room. Bisaha. 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 I am completely stuffed, but we have one last stop: dessert. We are finishing things off with fruit smoothies and some delicious-looking pastries. Okay, so if you've seen any of our other videos, you'll know that we tend to do most of our exploring on our own without a guide, but there are some places where having a guide can make all of the difference. Some of the cities here in Morocco can be pretty difficult to navigate, and while that is half the fun, so many of the places we went today we never would have found on our own. I think the perfect example is the community oven that we stopped at first thing this morning. First of all, what a cool tradition, and we never would have found that place. It was down a back alley, tucked around a corner, and honestly, even if we did stumble across it without Abdul, we would have had no idea what it was. What a great day. What a great day. I know we ended the video already, but we have come up to one of the terraces above the main square, and this has to be some of the best people watching I have ever done. Marrakesh is a crazy cool city. Okay, insert time lapses, and then the video is over. For real stuff.